go in. I didn't get mine yet. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It is wonderful to be with you this morning. It is an opportunity for me to preach my 27th or 28th? 27th Easter sermon here in America. And then if we count early services, it's double that. Today is a very special day for all of us. It is the day of God's jubilee for sin. You may not be familiar with the concept of jubilee in the Old Testament. The concept, maybe not the reality, but the concept was that anybody who purchased a piece of land after 50 years needed to restore it to its original owner. Or if someone had borrowed money from you and owed you money, after 50 years you had to forgive that debt to them. I want a 50-year mortgage on my house. <laughs> The reality was that it was not quite as good as it sounded. There was a purpose for Jubilee. The purpose was that as the 12 tribes of Israel came into the Promised Land, the land was divided up and each tribe received a large parcel of land. So if you sold a parcel of land in your tribe's area, to the member of another tribe, in order to keep the balance of the community, that piece of land had to be restored to its original tribal ownership. Otherwise, you could have a wealthy tribe completely taking over all the land of a less wealthy tribe, or an agrarian tribe who had great farmlands taking over the lands of somebody who had mountainous and rocky soil to work with. So the reality wasn't quite as good as it sounds, because people did not always celebrate Jubilee in the Hebrew faith as one of the rules of how they lived together in community. So there were problems and faults with it. But today is the Jubilee of God for sin. And God's jubilee is also about forgiveness. The difference is that God's works. God doesn't say, oh, I don't think I'm going to give that to you this year. I think maybe I'm going to forget your baptism. I'm going to not be present in Holy Communion. I'm, I, I'm just going to stay away and keep all that grace of mine for myself. God never says that. God is always prepared, always prepared when we come in the name of Jesus Christ to celebrate the forgiveness of sin with us and to celebrate the promise of life with us and to celebrate, even more importantly, salvation and resurrection with us. Every time we return, having family baptized, coming to receive Holy Communion, coming to Easter worship services, coming to regular church. Every time we come, even in the face of our mirror on a bathroom morning, before we're getting ready to go to work, we can say to ourselves, today is the day God has made. Let me rejoice and be glad in it, because today God has forgiven my sin in Jesus Christ. My boys had to get up at 5.30 this morning. They were pretty cranky. The three older boys of, of the current family at home, the three older boys came in and they helped make coffee and they helped get the Easter eggs put out in the play yard and they set communion and they helped around the parish as things needed to be moved to the kitchen for the dons. They took care of that. And they served, well, they, they served the breakfast somewhat reluctantly, yes. Because they had never done it before. But once they got into it, it was a lot of fun. 
It's nice to serve other people. It's what God hopes we will do in our lives, is serve other people. So Paul spends time in the early church writing his epistles, his letters to the early church, attempting to explain the significance of Jesus Christ to the world. No one has done that yet at the time Paul writes his letters. The Gospels have not been written. Only Paul's letters have been written and, we know, collected. So one of the very early things that Paul tells us is that we are justified by grace through faith. In other words, if we trust in Jesus Christ, we will be made right with God because of our faith in Jesus. And the ability to have faith doesn't come from inside of us. It comes by the power of God's Spirit. It, too, is a gift from God. The other part of this is that God sent his only son to die on a cross for us. He loves us so much that he sent Christ to die on a cross for us, to suffer for our sin and brokenness, and then that, that suffering fulfilled God's judgment on his creation so that Jesus bore all of that judgment on his shoulders. And so Paul writes in the book of Romans, nothing, can, nothing, I want you to hear that, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Name it, it cannot separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Not sickness. I think the only thing I know that might separate you is winning the lotto. Um, <laughs> Uh, but not sickness, not tragedy, not death, not powers and principalities, not, not an asteroid coming in from space and destroying the earth. None of that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord because of the power of the resurrection. This is the event of events in the world. That's why we come and we celebrate today. It's why we come with great joy. You know, we always think, oh no, Christmas is that time. Christmas is the primary celebration of the church. No, Christmas is the primary celebration of the economy. <laughs> Easter is the primary celebration of the church. It has primacy over every other celebration we gather for. Because it is in Easter that the living presence of, Judge, of Christ is made, pre he's made present in the water of holy baptism. He's made present in the bread and wine of holy communion. It is here on Easter Sunday and every Sunday as we celebrate Christ's resurrection that Christ intervenes in our lives to make us whole. It is here that we find courage to live lives that are not perfect, not always easy. But we can do that by faith. We can do that trusting God and believing in Jesus Christ. We, you know, life throws a lot of things our way. But we don't have to look very far to realize all the things that can happen in a short period of time in our lives. Uh-oh, I think the candy got to patchy. <laughs> Now don't all the rest of you start. <laughs> I pray you will choose to be in church celebrating the resurrection weekly. Every single week. And if you don't find the resurrection being celebrated where you're chosen to go to church, don't go there. Find a church where the resurrection is celebrated all of the time as the people of God gather around the sacrament of the altar and the sacrament of the font, around the people of God, the body of Christ, and the power of the presence of Jesus Christ 
who was crucified on the cross and raised from the dead so that you and I might know the greatest joy life has to offer, the certainty of always being with God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.